Welcome back everyone to episode 3 of this series. So in this series we will go into differences of a stateless and stateful widget. Uh, but before we begin, uh, just a brief message from our sponsor. If you are interested in any or all of these classes, it's definitely worth to check out Skillshare. Get a free month of Skillshare and stream more than 18,000 online classes on subjects like design, business and tech. Link is in the description. So let's just create a new widget. So go to the bottom of the page, type stateful. You have this, uh, this auto correction, you can type enter. And let's give this a name stateful example. Hit enter. And let's add a scaffold because if we don't add a scaffold, let's just show this first. So we take the stateful example. So instead of calling my home page, we call the stateful example. And we go back to the app, you can see it's black. So we have to have a scaffold. Let's add a, we can ignore the app bar for now. So the body will be a center. And the shell will be something, and we haven't created that. So let's create a new component. So let's add a directory called components. And add a new class in that directory called growing box so what this growing box will do is it will grow bigger each time we press on it so let's create a stateful widget call it growing box we can alt enter and import the material uh, so let's start with let's see we want to have a container with a width and height uh, and let's set the color to green. So first we will create a static const starting size, which will be 100. And then we can have a, let's give it a double also. So, and this will be the size we set that to starting size. Now we can pass in the size to both the width and height. And we can define our two methods. So we will start with only one method for now. So let's start with a grow method. So what this method will do is that it will increase the size. So the size is set to 100 for now. And we will call something called set state. So this is what defines pretty much a stateful widget. So when you call set state, set state will call a rebuild with or the call the build method with the new variable or with the updated variable. So if we set the size to add another 10 to size. This we call the build method with the new size. So if we add, so alt enter on the container, we need to have on press also. So we can add a inkwell and we can add a on tap and we call the grow method. So that should be enough. So we can copy this, go to main and inside the child, we call our growing box. So alt enter and to import the library. And uh, let's see how it turns out. So we have this box. If we press on it, you can see that it gets bigger because we have our set state. So if we remove our set state like this, it would grow the, um, the variable, but it doesn't call the rebuild function or the build function. So nothing will happen. So we have to have a set state when we want to update our value. Uh, let's just make another method, reverse size, which will call set state again, where the size will be our starting size. And ink will have uh, many properties with different on taps. So control 
type uh, control press you can see uh, let's have a on double press on long press so we will have a on long pressed or press and we can call the reverse size so this should reverse the size if we long press yeah so we can press many times and hold to reverse it so that's an example of um, stateful widget we can also go a bit further so this is the site that i linked on this the, the last tutorial so we have a favorite widget class so let's just copy this one just to show another example so we add another component let's call it what did they call it they call it a favorite widget so favorite widget we add a stateful we replace their state and we alt enter to import the material so now we have a favorite widget so we can take this favorite widget go back to the growing box add a child with a center widget and the child of the center widget will be this favorite widget and alt enter on that to import it so if we hot reload again you can see that we have this like feature so if we press on that we will see that it updates the value so this is the powerful thing with a stateful widget and you will be using this most of the times so a stateless widget will mostly only be used in like settings pages depending on what you do then and login pages and interactive pages we will be using stateful widgets um, so i just noticed that we put a stateful widget in the home page and just to make use of this because we can have this as a stateless but just to make use of it we can just create a changer which will change between the growing box and the favorite widget so we can set a bool to is box set that to true uh, so we can do a turner operator so cut this out so if is box is true we call the growing box and if it's false we call the favorite widget um, so let's just add a floating action button which will have a on pressed on a method that we will call um, change bool something like that so just, call, just create this so void change bool which will do if the, the box is true we'll do a set state and make it false and if it's false we'll do a set state and make the box true again like that so let's just see Oh, we didn't remove that so let's just remove the child of the box so now we have this box we can still make it grow but we can press this uh, floating action button to change between these boxes so we ha still have this and we can change it between this one uh, so that is all i hope you enjoyed the tutorial if you like it please like it if you dislike it just dislike it and uh, Tell me what you want to see in the future tutorials and have a nice day.